Welcome artists and creative people to Monet Cafe. I'm artist Susan Jenkins and today I'm bringing you a lesson in pastel painting where I discuss the power of a neutral palette. Now this is part three. There are two previous videos that discuss this more, but it's not necessary to see those videos. This is an all-inclusive video in itself of this particular painting. However, I like to add Bible verses to my paintings. However, if you would like to see the other two, the very first one called The Power of a Neutral Palette is exclusive to my Patreon page. Um, it is part one, and there's if you would like to become a member um, of my Patreon page, there's the website there. And in that particular video, I go more into the color theory behind neutrals, how you can make them yourselves with pastels. Also, I use Photoshop to really get a little deeper with color and value and neutrals. Now, part two is also the power of a neutral palette where I create this little uh, mini painting um, with the same neutral palette that I use for this painting. And I also uh, teach about doing a value sketch. And they don't have to be this large, but it's really for you guys who've been asking more about just some basic drawing um, tips and techniques. So uh, check out part two if you're interested in that. Now also too, I do sell prints and products of my work. Of course, the originals are available. If anybody's ever interested, you can contact me. I have my contact info at the end of the video. But I found out today, if I get this video posted in time, I'll put the date up here, that prints and products are actually shipped free today. So if you would like um, a canvas print, print, a regular print, a coffee mug, a pillow, a tote bag, whatever with any of my products, you can check it out and get free shipping today only. All right, I think it's time to paint, right? So here's the lovely photo of a field behind my house where I decided to paint a neutral palette. Okay, it's time to begin our larger version of the neutral palette painting. And I've chosen for this particular larger version to use UART sanded paper. I actually have some right here I can show you. Um, UART paper, the 400 grade. Um, I know a lot of pastel artists talk about this a lot. It's a really versatile paper. You can put water on it. You can wash it off. Um, one challenge to UART though is especially in humid climates, it will curl. And I have not found any way to prevent this, especially living in the Tampa, Florida area. Even when I've bought it, I've put it under books. I've tried to keep it in the coolest place, but lo and behold, I still get curling. But um, I have a quick little fix for that. Um, I, I did have another uh, video where I shared how you can actually iron it, and I give tips on that, but um, I found another neat new little way to fix UART paper. I'm going to make another video on that. Um, so I got it nice and flat. This piece was all, all curled up and I got it nice and flat with that technique. So there's a teaser for you. Um, but anyway, we've got our sketch done, our value sketch done. We've got our mini painting done with the palette. And um, I've zoomed in a little bit to show you this palette of uh, neutral colors with a bolder, um, more highly saturated uh, color intensity for the underpaint. All right, so my setup is basically, I usually keep the camera on this side because I'm left-handed. Sometimes I'll use my right hand if it's more convenient, but I have my iPad over to my right. And um, sometimes I'll work from a photo, sometimes I'll work from my iPad, but I wanted to have my value sketch up here to refer to, my mini painting, and the actual image of the field. And by the way, the field that I took the picture of is literally right out that window <laughs> for that beautiful foggy morning when I saw it. And it was bathed in neutral color because of the fog and because of the early morning light. Um, okay, so it's time to get started. I've got my pastels. Only thing I've got to do now is grab my coffee, my water, and put on some soothing, peaceful music. All right, let's paint. Now, I've zoomed in here to show you the color choices. These are the actual ones that I used for the mini demo. I may have grabbed one or two other neutrals. My neutral palette is literally right next to me and put them back in their spot, but not many. So, um, And surprisingly, uh, not many pastels were needed for this particular painting. Um, these, again, are the um, underpainting selections to give it that nice, warm... These are going to be our bolds underneath the neutral palette and I'm sorry if this keeps focusing on my hand <laughs> and um, so those um, obviously I have in varying degrees of value darkest next to darkest medium medium to light and light so if you have anything that's these um, 
five values that is in the magenta. I mean, you could even do this with reds and oranges and yellows, um, but just some warmer tones, and uh, that's really all you need for the underpainting selection. Now notice, other than that, all of these are really more neutral colors. You don't see any really bold colors jumping out at you. Um, these are my green choices. They all look kind of like dead greens. Um, nothing is really like that bright, vibrant green. And again, darkest value down to lightest value. Some of these are a little cooler, like maybe that one. Um, and actually, this one over here is a lighter value. This one's actually got some green in it. It would, it could actually go down here. Um, and then I've got some cooler blues. Um, some have a little more green in it than others, but uh, uh, again, according to value. And then I've got a purple that I use sparingly. And then I've just got um, kind of a, this is more of a oh, dulled out brown, um, kind of a taupe color, and um, then some lighter versions of that. So uh, that's our neutral palette with our bold underpainting, which really has a neat effect. All right, time to paint. Okay, so I have my UART paper taped down flat, and um, these are the charcoal pencils that I used. Uh, actually, not this one. Um, for the the value study and um, uh, getting in uh, basically just a general sketch uh, but for this one I really I could block all this in just with the pastels but I think I will just sketch in I'll use this lightest of the charcoal pencils um, to uh, to kind of get an idea in now I had talked about doing more um, drawing instruction for uh, Monet Cafe videos for beginner lessons and uh, while I won't go into a lot of detail with this one um, I will go over some of the basics of how how I approach things. Landscapes are not as tedious um, for drawing as um, say a person or um, an animal but um, you still want to get things right. I know a lot of times people think you don't have to draw that well to paint but I I disagree with that. I think if you improve your drawing skills, it's such a great foundation for a good painting. Now notice what I did. I didn't break out a ruler. I just marked this off. I know it's approximately an 8 by 10. 8 by 10s also, that's a little crooked, 8 by 10s um, also a standard size. So if you work in standard sizes uh, and a client wants to buy it, they can easily find frames, pre-made frames, instead of having to get custom frames. So sometimes that's good, but I don't like to stay bound by the size, standard size, so I leave myself a little room. I may want to stretch this out a little bit. Hey, Jackson. Um, so anyway, I just kind of divide things out into quadrants, and I've, I've learned to see things proportionately. Um, you can see in my sketch here that I kind of did the same thing here. Um, I know uh, typically you don't want to put a horizon line like right in the middle, but this composition was such that I thought it worked well, especially since some of these trees back here um, were a little bit higher. That's really the horizon line back there. This is just the base of this tree. All right, so I kind of just look at my, and I did this from the photo. Um, so I kind of get ideas with that, and then I notice things like, I don't know if you can see how far I am over here. I notice in the photo that kind of down the middle where the tree was. The tree was didn't come all the way to the center, but pretty darn close. How far did it come from the top? Um, it, it left a little bit of space up top. Um, so it's a an exercise in looking at positive and negative shapes. Um, and the more you do it, the better you get at it. So I'm just going to sketch in here a little bit and uh, keep those things in mind when you're drawing is looking at where things are in relation to other things. That's really, to me, one of the strengths in, in um, or a good habit for drawing that will help you a lot. Now there's a gauge of just sort of getting things in um, in general and now all I need to do is get in um, these um, values with the bolder um, color selections that I showed early on. Now this is going to be one of my Patreon goals when I get to a certain amount of members is to definitely buy some new pastels. I am um, seriously in need of more pastels. Um, I, I really haven't bought that many since the flooding of our home and I tried to save as much things as I could but 
I have a I have a pretty limited amount of pastels, embarrassingly, um, but uh, I really hope to replenish my supply, and your Patreon support would really help me do that. Now this is really, I don't need to get too specific about this, this is more just getting um, the darks and down here I can get the um, general location of um, where these grasses are and how they're growing um, once I get uh, my values in. But I am going to add a little bit, that was the darkest dark, I am going to add a little bit of this other um, lighter value um, in with this as well. And this is just kind of scumbling. I'm just getting, uh, I'm not drawing here. I'm just getting in this because I'm going to, I'm going to scrub it in to get a, get a value study going. All right, now I know another, one of the darkest things, this tree actually isn't as dark as the foreground because it's in fog and it's a little further away. But I am going to go ahead and get, um, get it in with a darker value and I will lighten it up as I work. And I'm running out of this pastel as I, as I'm talking here, <laughs> it's, the UR paper is taking it down to nothing. I hope I can finish this underpainting. It's hard to hold even. <laughs> All right, so now again, I'm going to add um, a little bit of this uh, value here. This is going to give it some interest. And I'm not pressing real hard, just so you know. This is uh, just uh, gently kind of scumbling this around. I'm also going to add a little bit more of this lighter value. I kind of want to lighten this tree up a little bit. You see, I've got the three, the three values working with each other here. Now, I do know that this area right in here, there's a base of the tree where, where these weeds kind of were growing. I'm going to try to hold this where I can work with it. They were darker. Um, so let's get those in. They came up kind of high right here. And then they tapered off, and there was a few ones growing right in there. All right, and um, that's really it for the darkest values. The rest of them are going to be more of the mediums. Now let's see, we've got our darkest here, dark, uh, uh, this is also dark, and then this is the next in line for dark. So now let's start working with this value. This is the next one, this is the third one down from darkest to lightest. And um, we've got this little area back in here, kind of behind these trees, it's another thing of bushes or something back there can't remember. I could look out my window and see. <laughs> and then also, too, this is um, closer to the foreground, so it's fairly dark. But it is, um, like I explained in the little mini painting, it is bathed in, um, in fog, and so it's going to be even a little bit lighter. This is that area where that fence is right here, okay? And it's a little darker, actually, than this little valley right here. Uh, it's, it's close to the same, but I'm going to uh, distinguish that a little bit more. Um, I think I will darken this up a tad, this little fence row here, with a little bit of this next value. All right, and now these trees in the distance here, um, I'm going to give them the third value down and then I'm going to lighten them up with um, the next lighter value. Because right now these two values are just kind of blending together. Now this tree was a little darker um, than some of the other things, so I'm going to take that second value. It's like a tree that was just kind of out in the middle of the field. I wasn't sure if I was going to leave it in when I did it, but I decided to do it. Okay, and um, now like I said, I'm going to lighten these up because they're further away, and I've got this nice little peachy tone. I'm still not at my lightest value yet. You see, these are this is going to give that illusion that these trees are further in the distance. And then when you do the painting, you know, you sneak some of these colors behind there. And below here actually is getting a little bit lighter in value. There's like that foggy, fogginess on the field. I don't know if I need it quite this light. And usually things that are flat are lighter in value than things that are vertical. So let me add a little bit more of this dark in here to kind 
kind of separate that from that foggy field. All right, you see all these bright colors? And we're gonna cover it in neutral when we're done. All right, so we've got our general idea here, except for the sky, and I'm going to um, get this lighter pink. I actually, I might even use a little bit of this. No, I won't, because that's a really light sky. So let me get this lighter kind of pink color. And um, nothing too um, specific other than just coating the whole thing. I also keep saying I'm gonna fix my easel so it doesn't shake so much. And I keep forgetting that. And I kind of do like a little bit of this light of the paper showing through. We don't have to cover this so, so much, like overly um, overwork it or anything. All right, so there is our value study. Now, what I'm gonna do before I start applying the other pastels is I'm gonna grab my um, pipe foam insulation. And again, always a thank you. I don't, I'm not sure if Karen Margolis, um, I always say her name wrong, Karen Margulis um, discovered this from another artist or someone suggested to her or if she discovered it herself. But I'm always very thankful um, for this because this pipe foam insulation you can get at any hardware store is an excellent tool for blending. I have found some other ones that work well too, but I happen to always have this um, right near me. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm just scrubbing all this in, getting this value study, and all this is doing is covering um, the surface of the UART paper, kind of blending it into the sanded surface, and um, also it's um, taking it down a notch so you actually will get a little bit more layering. All right, that's good. And I, I sometimes tend to work in sections, dark to light, um, or light to dark, but um, light to dark is actually really good if you've already got your, your thing kind of clean because now you, then you wouldn't drag all the the dark colors. Oh, I heard a neat other little thing the other day is that um, supposedly you can wash these like in maybe in the washer. <laughs> that would be interesting, huh? All right, so this is actually kind of scrubbing it off of my um, board a lot, but that's okay. Still got our general values in here. Okay, now I'm just going to kind of wipe this off on a paper towel before I go on to the next areas. And by the way, um, I have sometimes people ask, oh, is it okay if I share, I recreated your painting, is it okay if I share it in the Monet Cafe art group on Facebook or, um, of course, in our Patreon group? Um, I totally encourage you to share, but yes, always, that's the point of these. You can take this and emulate it exactly, as, as close as you can get, and share it. That's why I paint. I don't paint to enter my art in shows. I don't get all hung up over having to be in this art association or that art, even though it's great. I mean, that's awesome. But um, my, I love to teach, and I love it because, now I'm going to get the sky and I'm wiping it off. I love it because I didn't have any formal art training other than a few art classes majoring in graphic design. I just always loved it. And I, so many years ago, was forced to try to learn this pastel medium all by myself. And there weren't as many online resources back then, so it was quite frustrating. And, um, and I felt like I had the scratch and claw um, to learn about pastel painting and so I think this is just my way to give back and I love it I love providing lessons and um, That's what that's what it's all about here in Monet Cafe I love that people are all over the world and they're learning and everybody's helping each other So that's really cool. And that's also why um, I thank you for your support on my patreon page because it is allowing me giving me some more time to be able to paint and to provide more lessons. And I have a goal, hopefully, to be able to get an assistant to help me because I'm a one-woman show right now with the filming, the painting, the editing, the marketing, and everything. So uh, I'd love to get an assistant. So, But thank you, patrons, for your support. You've helped me more than you know. All right, so here's our basic little value study underpainting done with only five warm-colored pastels, warm um, uh, color family pastels. And um, that is it for bold color. The rest is going to be neutral. And if you're one of my patrons, you've had access to the first part of this video, which is on the power of neutrals. I go into um, more of some of the scientific and, and uh, reasoning uh, as to what makes a neutral, you know, as far as the color wheel and, and um, the real definition of a neutral and how they're uh, achieved. So um, if you want to see that video, that's only for my patrons, but you can see it if you become a patron for $5 a month. Otherwise, all of this is free on Monet Cafe. I'll never stop bringing free videos to Monet Cafe. All right, it's time to get started with this, and I'm excited. 
All right, now that we have this very highly saturated, warm underpainting, it's time to apply the pastels with a neutral palette and neutrals only. It's a similar technique that I did um, when I did this painting here. Um, it was um, actually, I got a lot of feedback. I used an oil paint underpainting and um, did the same thing where I applied more warm undertones with the oil paint and put neutral pastels on top and see the vibrancy it creates. Still kind of a muted feel, but you've got that little bit of um, color um, fun uh, because of the underpainting uh, and a couple little pops of color, you know, with some of the, um, the teals that I added in the background. So um, I do have another video I'm going to be making where I do an oil painting, underpainting, and fix something that could be um, an issue down the road um, with longevity. So I heard a lot of you guys and I appreciate your feedback and I've got a I've got a solution for that. So hopefully another video upcoming soon. Okay, so let's start painting here. I'm going to at first, um, again, um, refer back to the little palette that I showed you. Other than these, I'm done with the bold colors. It's all neutrals from here forward. I am going to speed up the rest of the painting process um, from this point on, but I will add some music for your listening pleasure. And I'm not speeding it up so fast that you can't still see what I'm doing. I just try to keep my uh, video time around an hour or less because it really does help with my upload speed because uh, I have pretty slow Wi-Fi where I am out in the country. Um, but do enjoy and I will pop back in. I have a few more comments I like to make during this as to uh, give a little more description as to what I'm doing and uh, I hope you guys are enjoying this. I know I'm enjoying working with neutrals. I'm definitely going to do this technique again.
For some reason, this little tree was bothering me in this painting. I think it was perhaps maybe a little too far over to the right or too large, or I don't know, I just felt like it was distracting. So yes, you can actually take a stiff brush, um, that was one where the handle had broken off, and uh, kind of brush off the majority of the pastel and uh, still have some layers to work with here. I also thought I'd mention too that I, I kind of reestablished that um, brilliant uh, bold pink that was originally um, underneath in the underpainting. I also added a little bit more of the uh, warm tones to the background trees. I did reintroduce some of those warmer tones um, because I, I kind of wanted those background trees to glow and I added a little more pink to the sky. If I did this painting over again, I would um, not overwork it as much as I did. I think I would use broader strokes, fewer strokes, and keep it even more uh, loose and free kind of like the first little painting if you didn't see part two of this series uh, go back and watch that one it just had a real spontaneity about it I got pulled away from this painting quite a few times and sometimes that breaks your rhythm and you come back and sometimes you get a little frustrated but all in all I was I was happy with the painting as uh, as an end result and um, it definitely was a great exercise and I I do think I will use this technique more where I do a um, more brilliant underpainting with neutrals um, primarily on top. I think it's a neat effect. All right, more painting.
finishing this up at this point getting close anyway and again I really enjoyed this now I'm very motivated to buy more neutrals <laughs> I think I mentioned in the previous um, lesson part two that uh, I'm, I've got my eye on uh, blue earth pastels they're made by Dakota pastels and um, I do believe they have a little I'll have to share with you guys on my patreon page I think they have a little discount on their set that I want to get called the nomad set it's got some nice neutrals in it so I hope you guys enjoyed this here's the final and uh, as always happy painting and also thank you thank you thank you to my patrons from my patreon page you guys are really helping me to create more videos and special content for my patrons but also just to keep these free videos coming to Monet cafe so everybody should thank my patrons Thanks guys so much. Happy painting and blessings.